Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the Scared Sheep, where I, Miss Scared Sheep herself, take a deep dive into lesser known Japanese horror. In this episode, I'll be taking a look at the 2012 death game movie, Joker Game. If you're unfamiliar with the death game genre, it's exactly as it sounds. You play a game where if you lose, you die. Death games can come in all sorts, from grim takes on children's games, like in the movie Kamisama no Yutori, or the Korean Netflix mega-hit series Squid Game, to more action-packed hunt-or-be-hunted movies like Battle Royale or The Hunger Games. Anything can be turned into a death game. In this movie's case, the game in question is a classic card game that many of us played growing up called Old Maid, or as it's known in Japan, Babanuki. With an estimated budget of $3 million US, Joker Game was directed by Watanabe Takafumi, and while he directed a few movies and a TV show prior to Joker Game, he has not directed anything since. The movie stars actress Kitahara Rie as Akasawa Chinatsu, our main protagonist of the story. She debuted as a member of the Japanese idol group AKB48 in 2008 and has been in a number of movies and TV shows, including other horrors like Toshimae and Haunted Park and the live-action movie for Higurashi no Nakukoroni. The movie also stars Takatsuki Sara and Koike Yui. Takatsuki Sara is best known for her role in the Ghibli film Omoide no Mani, as well as great teacher Onizuka. And Koike Yui is best known for starring in numerous Super Sentai films and TV shows as Gokai Pink. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with this series, it's actually the source material for the American version called Power Rangers. There is a sequel to Joker Game, which was released in 2013, called Joker Game Dashitsu, or Joker Game Escape in English, which I may cover in the future. Now let's jump into Joker Game. Accompanied by some very sinister sounding music, we see a small number of cards being shuffled by a man who passes them off to a woman to have them placed face down in a special velvet-lined box. The woman then goes around the room and offers the box to each teacher who selects a card and places it face down in front of them. As she does this, the man explains the importance of the game that will take place next month and how it is for the future of today's youth. He instructs all of the teachers to flip over their cards and congratulates the teacher with the highest card. Just outside the city, a group of students heads into the mountains as the field trip bus drives away and the front gate is shut by security guards. Although the gates and security guards are unusual, it's very common in Japan for students to go on field trips with their class overnight or even over a few days several times throughout the year. Like we see in the movie, the summer often means a field trip to the mountains, or somewhere outdoorsy, where students will camp together and cook large meals as a group. And even though this field trip turned out to be incredibly different from that, I can only imagine that a camping trip of sorts was what the students had in mind when they left the house this morning. Once inside the classroom of an empty looking high school, the teacher has all students hand over their cell phones in a box. He then plays a video for the students titled Babanuki, which shows a very cheerful looking teacher and his students playing a game of Babanuki, or Old Maid. The video explains some very special rules to this particular version, in that beyond playing as usual, you may create a contract with seven members and play as one unit, with only the leader playing as a representative of all the other members. If you win, then the whole team wins. But if you lose, then it is a loss for everyone. You are disqualified from the game if you are late, damage any cards, or try to dispose of them. With the explanation finished, the teacher opens a very carefully sealed case and hands a small number of prepackaged cards to each student. Casually, the students form small groups of their friends and start playing. Chinatsu begins to play with the new student, Ono Kana, who sits behind her. But she changes her mind as soon as Kana starts reaching for the Joker card and refuses to play anymore. 
She confides in her friend Minako that she holds the Joker and asks what she should do. Minako seems to have a plan though and brings Chinatsu over to a kind looking girl named Shimokawa Chihiro, who had been sitting all alone until now. The three girls play together until Chihiro chooses the Joker from Chinatsu's hand and the two of them leave. The class continues to play until only a handful of students are left holding cards, including Chihiro, who is still holding Chinatsu's Joker card. One by one, the other students clear their hands, and unfortunately, Chihiro is still stuck with the Joker in her hand. The teacher calls her next to him and forces the class to all clap for her, telling her she did a good job and tried her best. Before being given any time to react, a man in white enters that room and injects her with something in her neck. Chihiro stumbles forward and then collapses to the ground, foaming at the mouth and convulsing before being carried away by two security guards. The students start panicking and their teacher gives them a short lecture about how cruel the world is and how, as the future of Japan, they need to toughen up. He then gathers his things and leaves the classroom, dismissing them for the day. The students head to the dorms where they will be staying during the training camp, as the government is calling it. In their room, Kana brings up how she saw Chinatsu and Minako trick Chihiro into being stuck with the Joker card and then leaves the room. And while Minako doesn't seem to feel any responsibility for what happened, Chinatsu appears to feel some guilt and excuses herself to the bathroom. Downstairs, she catches Kana leaving the building and quickly puts on her shoes to follow her all the way to the school. In the hallway, Kana calls out to Chinatsu to join her, and they both stand out on the balcony to spy on the security guards. The next day, all but four of the remaining students show up to class. The teacher puts on the TV again, and this time, we can see footage from a surveillance camera in the dorm rooms. The teacher comments on how you must play the card game until the end. And then we see a man enter the room and begin to beat the student as he was reading. The masked man then proceeds to bludgeon the other three students, who also skip, as horrified class watches on. One student in particular receives the blame for the fates of the other four and becomes so distraught that he jumps out of the window. The classroom is only on the second floor though, so he ends up mildly injured with what appears to be a sprained ankle or something. His classmates call to him from the balcony, but it's already too late. As he limps across the field, the masked man runs towards him and begins attacking. On the third day, the students are handed their cards to begin the next round of Babanuki. Chinatsu is very clearly relieved when she checks hers and finds no Joker card this time. The bully of the class, Kanda, begins calling out other boys to show him their cards so that he can find matches while avoiding the Joker. Yokoyama Naoya shows him his cards, but he doesn't seem to find a match. Another boy, Kashima Yohei, who had been picked on by Kanda previously, stands up for Naoya and says that the whole class would be happy to see him lose. Kanda begins punching Yohei repeatedly in the face, knocking him into Naoya and making him drop his cards. The teacher comes in and breaks up the fight. Yohei checks in with Naoya and they exchange a few kind words before he walks off with his cards and Naoya picks his up off the ground. At his desk, Naoya notices that his cards somehow now include the Joker, which we know they didn't before. Chinatsu notices Naoya's reaction to his new card and lets Kana and Minako know he has the Joker. Minako gets upset at the suggestion that Yohei switched his card with Naoya as she and Yohei have always been close friends. At Kana's suggestion, the three girls make a contract together, like we saw earlier in the instruction video. In the school's gymnasium, we see Yohei approach the group of boys with an idea. 
He says he wants to end the game as quickly as possible and suggests that they enter a contract with him. He manages to convince the other boys first, which leaves Kanda alone, put in a position where he now realizes he will be screwed if he doesn't join. Kanda begs Yohei to let him sign the contract too. Back in the classroom, a group of girls begin arguing and the teacher convinces them to make their own contract together rather than playing against each other individually. This essentially makes four teams now. The team of three girls, led by Kana, the team of boys, led by Yohei, the team of girls, led by Ueda Yoko, and the team of only Naoya, who we know holds the Joker. Fortunately for him, though, Naoya manages to be the first one out, which means one of the other three is holding the Joker. Yohei studies the cards in Kana's hand and notices two scratches in the upper corner, which he recognizes to be the Joker, and so chooses from Yoko's hand. Yoko then suggests to Kana that since her team only has three members, she should purposely lose in order to save all the students on the other teams whose contracts are full. The other classmates join in and also ask her to please lose for their sake. Much to Chinatsu's dismay, Kana actually agrees and forfeits the game, but the teacher can't let her do that. So Kana comes up with an alternative. She places her four cards down on the table and tells her to pick the rightmost card, which is the ace, a card she knows that Yoko is looking for. With a little hesitation, Yoko decides to trust her and is rewarded with the card she needs, getting her and her team out of the game. Yoko doesn't seem to feel very good about this win, though, and heads back to the dorms. This win, though, and heads back to the dorms. This just leaves Yohei and Kana left. Kana does something similar for Yohei, and instead of letting him pick from her hand, she shuffles her two remaining cards and places them face down underneath her hands. She asks him to trust her, though, just as Yoko did, and to pick the one underneath her right hand. Yohei moves side to side to try and spot the scratches, but can't. Unlike Yoko, though, he decides to pick the other card under her left hand and gets the Joker. Kana picks the card she needs, and the men in white enter the room, injecting each losing boy with the same chemical they had injected Chihiro with. Minako becomes hysterical when they inject Yohei with it, as she had very strong feelings for him despite him treating her terribly the last few days. Later at school that night, Kana and Shinatsu spy on the security guards once again. We see the boys from the losing team being loaded into a minivan. Counter to what the students had been led to believe, these students don't seem dead. Perhaps the drug they are being injected with is more of a strong sedative rather than a lethal chemical. この On their way back to their dorm, Kana and Chinatsu run into Minako, who exchanges some harsh words with Kana. Outside, Minako tells Chinatsu how annoying she finds her, and pretty much ends their friendship. It's now the last day of the training camp, as the government likes to call it. The last day of playing Babanuki. Before the students begin playing, though, Minako walks up to the front of the class and asks people to make a new contract with her. She doesn't want to be in a contract with Kana and Chinatsu, saying that Kana will try to lose again today, which Kana admits to be true. Naoya, who hadn't been part of a contract before, is the first to join her, 
and they both signed the paper. One by one, the other girls in the classroom also join, leaving Kana and Shinatsu out. The three girls sit down to start the game, and we can see that the Joker is in Chinatsu's hand. After a few rounds, Kana takes the Joker from her. She reacts by giving Minako the same choice that she gave Yoko, and tells her to pick the left card. Although Minako says she can't trust her, she does pick the left card. Minako probably should have gone with her gut though, as it was the Joker after all. Kana thanks Minako for believing her, and says that it's stupid for her to try and act like she can save the whole class. Instead, she insists that she is going to go save her sister. Chinatsu goes on to pick the Joker from her though, and the card comes back around to where it started. Finally, Minako clears her hand leaving only Kana and Chinatsu left. Chinatsu puts her last two cards down on the table and tells Kana that she wants to save her. So she should choose the left card, as the right card is the Joker. Kana doesn't believe her though, and chooses the Joker on the right. Both girls talk about how they don't want to lose to this world, and Kana says how scared she is. She puts the cards down on the table again, and tells Chinatsu that the one on the left is the Joker. But this time, Chinatsu notices how she touches her bangs, and realizes this is actually a tell of hers, something she does when she's lying. Shinatsu picks the left card and clears her hand, leaving Kana holding the Joker. Shinatsu watches as Kana is walked out to the minivan before a man in white approaches her. She injects him with the same drug they used on the students before, using it on the two guards and the other man in white as well. She tries to pull Kana so they can run away, but is stopped by the teacher. As he closes in on Shinatsu, Kana takes her turn to save her and shoots him twice in the back with another needle gun that she had found. The girls take off running and the ending credits roll. Okay, so. There isn't a lot to unpack in this movie as it's fairly straightforward. It is an interesting take on the death game genre in that it's really just a very lame field trip for the most part. The students are fed and housed and overall well taken care of. The only thing they are asked to do is play a card game and the majority of them walk away from it completely unharmed. In a typical death game, there is only one person who walks away and all the deaths tend to be quite brutal. So by those standards, Joker game is exceptionally tame. I do want to take a moment to draw some comparisons to one of the original death game movies and one of my personal favorites, the cult classic Battle Royale. When I hear the term death game, this is the first movie that pops into my mind. Based on the 1999 book of the same name by Takumi Koshin, which, by the way, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend. It's a great book and gives so much detail that the movie leaves out. Battle Royale is considered to be one of the most influential movies in the last few decades, and even one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite films. We can see a lot of inspiration taken from Battle Royale in Joker Game, but does it do the movie any good? For starters, the class is taken by bus to the area where they will play the game under the false pretenses of a regular field trip. This is the same as Battle Royale, but we never see the bus ride itself, only the bus driving away. Also, we can see that the location of the game is on the mountain just outside of the city, rather than in an undisclosed location to keep the game private for its duration. Could this be because it's not actually a game to the death? 
unlike in Battle Royale? In Battle Royale, the bus drive is the first scene where we see that the reality of this field trip is extremely confidential and the government will go to great lengths to facilitate it. In Joker Game, it's almost as if the parents just needed to sign a permission slip with all the details and they were good to go. We next get an explanation for the rules for Joker Game in a very similar manner to that in Battle Royale, but the videos have two very different feels. One captures the gravity of the survival game, while the other captures the comparatively light-heartedness of the card game, where you just get a little injection and are then carried away. And while I give both movies the credit deserved for the first death being the factor that truly drives home the situation that the students find themselves in, again, Joker Games still manages to make the situation feel much lighter. Both games are played over the course of three days. However, the three days spent in Battle Royale are intense and show the struggle within each student between self-preservation and loyalties to friends. In Joker Game, however, we see no real struggles, no fights for survival, only the wish not to be holding the Joker at the end. And given that teamwork is encouraged within the rules of the game, there aren't really any conflicts between previous loyalties and friendships as a whole, since many students can simply team up together in a contract. Honestly, for two government programs aimed at improving the quality of Japan's youth, they couldn't be more different. And for two movies that are supposed to be of the death game genre, Joker game just falls flat. Of course, this is all just in my opinion, and I would love to hear what you guys think. And that's it for Joker game. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe as that really helps me know to keep making more. As always, thank you so much to everyone for all of your support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye.